Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. I'm your guitar friend on the internet and you're watching 60 Cycle Hum. In this video, I'm going to be showing you this Firefly Les Paul style object here that they actually sent to me, which is a bit surprising to me. They're, they actually hired me. They're paying my demo rate. You might have noticed the little paid promotion thing that came up here. Anytime that I receive money to do anything, I click that tab on the back end of YouTube so that you guys can know. But anyways, it's surprising to me because I've covered four other Firefly guitars before this, all of which I bought, and three out of four I didn't recommend <laughs> at all. I started out with their 338 uh, guitar, which is a semi-hollow style thing, and I legitimately really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very fun guitar. Uh, it had its issues. It, they were selling those for 140 bucks on Amazon. So of course there's going to be issues. Any reasonable person can expect quality control issues and quirky little details at that price point. But it was a very fun guitar to play. It was pretty. It had the sparkly gold top on it. Uh, the issues that I had were that there were little cosmetic details here and, and here and there, you know, quality control that you just can't avoid with a sub $200 instrument. The pickups were microphonic, which was the biggest issue, but the rest of it was really fun. I keep using that word because that's the truth. And then I tried a Telecaster style guitar from them. It was fine. It needed some help in the pickup department. Like it just, I didn't like the character of the pickups. Uh, it just, it did, it didn't have that fun element to it. And then I tried their double cut, uh, LP junior style thing. The, the neck was super thick on it, which sometimes I like. There's like two types of thick baseball bat style necks. There's the type that you immediately bond with and you can't believe you love a thick neck that much. And there's the kind that just feels wrong in your hand. And it, it just had the type of neck that felt wrong in my hand. Also, I had trouble getting that guitar and also their single cut LP special guitar to intonate and to have the action that I wanted and things like that. So for them to come to me and be like, hey, we want to send you a guitar and we're going to pay your demo rate is bold. It's honestly bold. And you know what? I get it because this guitar checks out. I think these are going to be like 200 bucks or something like that, or they have been 200 bucks. I don't know what the next run's going to cost. Things always change you know, in Amazon world and online retailer world, they sell these directly as well through uh, guitargarden.com, I think is the website. I'll have links down below. But for, if it is truly a $200 guitar, for 200 bucks, it checks out. It is, it is very much the best of the bunch that I've tried so far. It is better than that first 338 that I actually liked. It still is not without issue. I'll get into that in a bit. There are issues here, but there's a big culture of people buying these guitars online. There's a group for them. I'll put the group as well. It's not the group that banned me. That's another history I have with Firefly Guitars. There was a Firefly gu Guitars group that didn't like the content of my videos and they banned me from the Facebook group over it. And then that group turned into a Harley Benton group like a month or two later. So it's like, why did they even care? But anyways, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of ranting and, you know, rabbit trails in this video, I'm sure. Let's get it. Let's get into it. I'm going to go from tip to tail and go through all the details. And then I'm going to start playing around with it and giving you sound samples. And, you know, you'll be able to hear what the pickups sound like and everything like that. So we'll start from the tip. The headstock is what I'm considering the tip this time. Um, I actually have no problem with the headstock shape. This is just all aesthetics right now. A lot of times you get into budget guitars and the headstock shape can be just flat out fugly. Uh, this is not one of those. I think it's fine. You know, it doesn't catch my eye in any sort of weird way. I do tend to, you know, I, I have a graphic design background. I tend to judge guitar logos poorly when they feature a guitar in the logo. And the Firefly logo has a guitar headstock at the top of the F, which is kind of cutesy. It's kind of fun. You can't expect high art, you know, from a $200 guitar. But then there's brands that are not $200 guitars. 
that are putting guitars in the logo on their headstock and it's always driven me a little bit bonkers it's it's a personal thing but the uh the finish on the headstock uh is without any sort of quality control issues that jump out to me it looks all very high polished and clean no kind of like polish biting through the finish or anything like that it's nice and glossy uh, there is an aesthetic issue on the headstock you see this headstock inlay here it is crooked and i'll put up a picture showing the center line and how it lines up with the neck and you'll be able to see yeah it's crooked um other people on the internet on the firefly group have pointed that out that it is an issue but it's a 200 hundred dollar guitar guys <laughs> You have to forgive a few little details like that. The tuners on this guitar, the tuners are legitimately wonderful. They're firm, they're smooth, uh, combined with the cut of the nut. Like I've had zero tuning issues with this guitar. And I usually have tuning issues with most guitars. I do all my irresponsible bends and it's really easy for me to pull a guitar out of tune. But this one's been rock solid and the tuners are really nice pieces of hardware. They're unbranded. But Firefly, wherever you're buying these tuners from, don't stop. Keep getting these tuners for your guitars because they are rock solid. They feel really, really nice. Uh, like I mentioned, the nut seems to be cut just fine. I'm sure people who, you know, are luthiers, luthiers, however it's pronounced, would have, you know, a more detailed opinion on the nut. I'm, you know, more of a hobbyist. <laughs> as things go. But as far as my personal preferences go, it seems to be cut just fine. It's not overly high on the lower frets here. So I'm not pulling out a tune when I'm playing cowboy chords and whatnot. The edges of the nut are flush and smooth with the binding and the rest of the neck. So there's no like kind of quirky, like, oh man, that feels kind of bad when I get up there with my fingers sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, to me, for my, you know, personal taste, I think the nut is cut just fine. The neck, it's comfortable. There's nothing surprising or exotic about the shape of the neck. It's very normal. It's not challenging, not exciting, but it's fine. It's good. It, you know, I wouldn't be shocked to pick up, you know, a $600, $800 Epiphone and have the neck feel just about the same. The edges of the binding are nice and smooth. The fretwork is actually really decent. I think I could compare this fretwork favorably to any guitar that's in like a four to eight hundred dollar price range. Uh, the previous Fireflies that I have experience with, uh, the frets were gritty, like chalk or sandstone, and eventually that gets worn away as you play. But that's a quality control sort of thing, where they're actually polishing the frets now instead of just leaving them raw. But I will say, across most of the neck. The fretwork is is great. They're, you know they're not sharp on the edges or anything like that. Nice smooth polish on there. They're all pretty level until you get down to the 16th fret, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. There it is. The 17th fret is just a little bit too high. I checked the whole neck with my little fret rocker here, and it really is the only fret on the neck that has an issue. And it's really just three strings on that 17th fret that caused the 16th fret to buzz out. I can fix that. I have a little fret leveling stone and a little, you know, fret like guard thing that'll, you know, protect the fret board. I could fix that when I have the strings off in probably about 10 minutes, just bringing down that fret a little bit. But it's a $200 guitar. There's gonna be issues like that. I would recommend that if you're really nervous about that sort of thing, you are not up to the challenge of fixing it. Uh, buy one of these from a retailer where you know you will be able to do returns. But buying a fret level little rocker thing here and buying, you know, the polishing stone, you know, a couple little leveling tools is a worthwhile investment for any guitarist. If you're gonna spend some time working on your guitars every now and then you find a fret that you just wanna tweak a little bit, it's not scary to do. Go watch some videos of other people doing it. I believe in you. I think you can do it because I've done it and you know, I'm a doofus. <laughs> 
But yeah, across the vast majority of the neck, the frets are good. They're legitimately fine. None of them are popping off or, you know, doing anything weird. Like, it's hard to believe. Like, especially how long I've been playing guitar since the uh, mid-90s and stuff like that. It's hard to believe that a $200 guitar can be playable, but also kind of pretty. Which takes us down to the body. It's got a single piece veneer on the top, which actually has a nice bit of flame on it. It actually has some decent depth that dances and shimmers as you move it in the light. Not bad. A lot of times people like a book matched uh, veneer where you get the, uh, the center line and it has the same sort of flame radiating from the middle like it's mirrored. Uh, that's not what this is. You have the single piece. Some people might prefer that. I don't know. I don't have any personal preference in that direction. I'm just describing what we're looking at here. All the hardware is very attractive. Like, it's not over the top, like, oh, I can't believe that they use this premium hardware, but there's nothing about it that screams like, oh, this is a $200 guitar. It all looks fine. And, you know, the knobs and the switches all feel firm and smooth. I've encountered switches over the years where there wasn't any quality control on the switch and they didn't stay in position or were easily bumped out of position. Now this one clicks just fine and stays in position just fine. Uh, as you know, from my personal preference, I don't think there's any reason to change any of that hardware unless, you know, you're going to do some sort of tweaky, modified, upgrade sort of thing. The pickups. I have, I have a feeling these are the same pickups that were in that 338. They are absolutely microphonic. I will demonstrate that at some point in this video. That can be a feature or a flaw depending on who you are. Some people actually prefer a pickup that's got a bit of a microphonic nature to it because it picks up a little bit, you know, extra chime and jangle with your playing, a little bit extra character because it's not just acting as an electromagnetic pickup, it's also acting as a microphone. <laughs> so you get a little bit extra mojo with the sound of your guitar. Now, if you're doing high gain stuff at stage volume, you're gonna need to swap at least one of the pickups on this and use the other pickup as, you know, a feedback machine if you want to. But you're gonna, to have this be a stage ready guitar, it will need a pickup swap. For home playing, for home recording, you might prefer that sound. You could just wax pot the pickups too. There's people who have done that in the past and I actually thought about doing that when I had the 338 and I just never got around to it. <laughs> so yeah. There's really only three main issues worth pointing out on this guitar. And then it's a totally playable, absolutely fun. It is a fun player's guitar. There's the crooked kind of inlay on the headstock, which is completely aesthetic. Like it's cosmetic. Who cares? Really? It's a $200 guitar. There is that dead fret. That's a much, much bigger issue, but it's fixable. It's totally fixable, and I believe that you can do it, because I can do it. And then there's the microphonic pickups, which, you know, like I said, it's a feature or a flaw depending on who you are. But, like, I, I keep saying it, for 200 bucks, like, what can you really expect? Like, if this was a $400 guitar, I'd be like, ah, that's a fail. You know, that issue, that quality control issue is a fail. Like, you can't sell $400 guitar and have those issues. But a $200 guitar, it's a fun project starter. It's a fun player. Uh, I'm on the edge of being able to recommend it to a new player. Uh, if you ran into a high fret, say, on the 5th or the 7th fret, that would be a much bigger bummer. And you might need, you know, if you're not comfortable doing that kind of work on a guitar... When you're just starting guitar, then you end up taking it to a tech or hopefully you end up returning the, the guitar or something like that. You might not even find that issue as a new player. Um, but for seasoned players out there, people collecting, you know, affordable guitars to do work on them, it's not that big of an issue. All right, let's get into some pickup sounds now that I flapped my gums for way too long. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a timestamp below for people who want to skip all the talking. But honestly, that's probably where most of the important information is because my playing is not important information. <laughs> All right, here is a big open G chord 
on the neck pickup. By the way, I'm playing through my two Princeton's rig, which both my Princeton's are set to be very, very clean. There's no grit or character dialed in with these amps. They're nice and low volume so that you can hear the guitar and not hear the amps. You know what I mean? Here is the middle position. The pickups really don't sound bad at all. They, they sound fine. It's just that microphonic nature because they need to be wax potted or something like that. You can do the thing where you roll off, you know, one of your volumes and you can do the stuttery thing, the classic kind of Gibson four knob sort of trick. Oh, a little quirky thing. Maybe it won't show its face here without any gain on, but the volume knob on the neck pickup when it's turned all the way down, here I'll turn on some gain. It still passes a little bit of signal. It might have something to do with the quality of the pots or something like that. I have opened up the back and taken a peek up in there. I'll put a, a picture up. It's what you would expect from a $200 guitar. It's not fancy, you know, cloth covered wiring and, and whatnot. The attention to detail cosmetically does not exist inside of there. <laughs> All right. Let's do a couple little effects here. I'm gonna start with an overdrive. It got the big ear pedals, Stevis and Burkhead. I actually have a group of big ear pedals. I have the L reverb. I have the Stevis and Burkhead, which is a modified tube screamer sort of thing. I've got the woodcutter, which is a rack. And then I have the Rev G4, which is a high gain style thing here. And then a Boss DD8 for some, you know, like arena rock style digital delay. <laughs> on. I think that's a fun kind of crunchy grit tester. And there's one of my safety riffs. Here it is on the neck pickup. It does that Les Paul like singing sustain sort of thing. Especially on the neck pickup. Here's the 12th fret on the bridge pickup. Middle position. <laughs> that 16th fret. Let's try the rat style pedal here, the big ear woodcutter.
fudged that one. <laughs> but uh, the pickups sound fine. They sound decent. Like, I haven't run into any issue where I'm like, ah, oh, man, those sound too muddy or they sound too bright and thin or anything like that. They, they sound like PAFs. You know, they just do. <laughs> how I felt about the pickups on the 338 besides being microphonic I actually liked the sound of them and I didn't you know feel the need to swap the pickups I'm not a shredder or anything like that. The way the neck is set up, the way the action is set up is totally just fine for me. It could be lower for people that like a really, really light touch. Of course, you'd probably need to tweak that one fret to get lower because that 17th fret will start to affect more frets as the strings get lower. But I can feel, but I feel like I can play decently fast on this. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing about this neck that is slowing me down. The only thing slowing me down is, you know, the limits of my own ability. <laughs> but yeah, that, I'm impressed with it. I'm impressed with the playability of the neck for sure. And I didn't really mention kind of the cosmetics of the fretboard material here. There is a bit of dog hair going on. Some people like that as a look. So I don't know if, you know, you can say like that's a negative or a plus. I'll put pictures of that up right now as well. But I haven't had any of the issues with like, you know, like polish coming off on my fingers or anything like that. It just feels like the quality control is up across the board on this guitar versus the other Fireflies that I've tried out. Now let's get into those microphonic pickups and the feedback issues and stuff like that. Here is the Rev G4 set up to be very hot. You can hear it starting to pick up my voice just from the guitar being pressed against my body. Micro. Microphonic. Throw some long delay on there. Micro. Phonic. Here's the neck pickup. Neck. Neck. I recently had someone go back to one of my old Firefly videos and accuse me of maybe modifying the guitar to have microphonic pickups because he got a Firefly that didn't have them. So obviously I was lying. Why would I do that? There's no reason for me to do that. Um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, if you're gonna play high gain stage volume stuff, I've got these amps running pretty quiet right now. Like they are, I'm in a garage. I'm in a garage in my house. I'm not upsetting my family right now with the volume level of these guitars. At least I hope not. objectively bad feedback where that's just the pickup feeding back not the string that's the pickup you want the string to feedback you don't want the pickup to feedback there
I started to lose it. <laughs> Can you hear that? I'm not getting like the worst of the feedback right now. It's a little tinge of it every now and then. I'm trying to the volume. Yeah, that really high pitched feedback that's not the string feeding back or the, the resonance of the wood feeding back, it's the cover of the pickup. So it's this very high pitched metallic sort of feedback. It's not great, but a little bit of wax potting on these pickups would fix that or just replacing the pickups would fix that. Um, man, that Rev G4, <laughs> damn that thing is a monster. this up I stand by it for 200 bucks I think there's a lot of guitar here you, you can't you can't be too down on the details the little quirks here and there when you're paying $200 for a guitar like this the the key thing here is that it's fun it's fun to play I haven't picked it up once and been like I'm not having a good time I have a good time when I play this guitar and if you're going to buy an affordable guitar, a budget guitar, a cheap guitar, whatever you want to, you know, whatever terms you want to use to describe it, it should be fun. It won't be the same fun as a high-end guitar, but it should still be fun because otherwise, why are you doing it? You don't want any guitar in your life that's going to be a curse. You know, you want every guitar you own to be fun in some way because that's why you're playing because playing is fun. That's why it's called playing. And I think I'm, I can sign off pretty squarely on this guitar and say that it is a fun guitar, uh, much the way the 338 was a fun guitar, in my opinion, but very different from how those other three guitars from Firefly were not fun guitars, for me anyways. I mean, it's all subjective, but I am I was a little bit nervous. I'll say that. I, I told you earlier in the video that Firefly sent this to me and they're paying my demo fee. And... I was a little bit nervous that it would show up and I'd have to really, really trash on it. I'm glad I didn't have to do that. So anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments, support us on Patreon. Click the links down below if you're shopping for anything, really. I mean, you can help me out by making my general links, you know, the links that you use in your browser because anything you buy, not just the stuff that, you know, I have links for, uh, will get me a percentage with affiliate earnings. And that is a big part of how I pay bills around here and take care of my family, making this my job. You know, this is my job. So anyways, bye everyone. Stay grounded. <laughs>